One of my favorite movies of all time is a movie called A Beautiful Mind. I love it so much because it looks at one man's journey with schizophrenia and how he overcomes the struggle he has with hallucinations, uh, both auditory and visual. Basically, he sees people. That's what I'm going to go out and show you in a moment in a short little clip of the movie. But before we do that, I want to go out and look at how ACT looks at schizophrenia or hallucinations. Let's look at this for a moment. Let's assume for this example that this is someone like you and I. We go out and we experience two types of thought. We have thought that we can go out and generate. Let's just call that our awareness or our focus or our attention, where you and I decide where we're going to move our attention, focus and awareness. Then there's another part of, I suppose, our thinking process that we don't have control over. So this is the part we have control over. The part that we don't have control over, I want to call the mind. Just bear with me for a moment. Now, the mind is a part of our thinking self that we can't go out and control. The easiest way to go out and demonstrate this is to ask you to close your eyes and think of nothing for the next 20 seconds. Think of nothing. Don't listen to my voice. Don't think about what's going to be happening maybe tomorrow or the next day, what, what you've got coming up. Just nothing. Blank the mind. What we find is that by trying to have no thoughts, we often go out and bring up thoughts. Or what we might find is that the mind just keeps chattering, it keeps talking. It's kind of like a stream of thoughts, if you will. So the mind speaks to us. It comments, it narrates, it asks questions, it answers those questions, it goes out and judges, criticizes, assumes, and the like. So it's in a constant chatter. The other thing that it does, it can also generate images. Just like if you close your eyes and you think of a pink elephant or an ice cream, you can kind of bring those images to mind. You can also go out and remember and reminisce about times and uh, in the past and bring them up in the here and the now as well, in your mind's eye, so to speak. And you can also go and have dreams. So that's the mind going out and producing images. Now, what's interesting about hallucinations is that they are no different to what the mind goes out and produces, thoughts, comments, images, and the like. What diffusion does is it allows us to go out and, number one, notice the mind. Or if I could say, notice the thought. Label that, and you'll notice that I actually called it a thought. So I, loaded, I, I, I noticed it as a thought. And then finally, allow it to be there. So not to struggle with it, not to fight with it, not to try and wrestle with it or change it or manipulate it or move it or any of those things. So what's the difference between the mind speaking to me, that's the uncontrollable part, the mind speaking to me and it gives me a thought about the world or the mind giving me an image about something that you can't go out and see or let's call it a hallucination. What's the difference? What we're saying is there is actually no difference. They are both thoughts. We can notice them, label them and allow them to be there. Now I'm going to show you a clip that comes from the movie A Beautiful Mind where the main character, Dr. Uh, Professor Nash, is allowing his students to leave the room after a lecture and he's saying goodbye, 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 goodbye. Now in his life he's had lots of hallucinations. They have, uh, uh, he's experienced what, what, what some would term as schizophrenia, so he's having hallucinations. And what happens is that he's approached by someone new in his life, someone that he hasn't met before. So what happens is he gets approached by that person who says, Professor Nash, 
and he looks at the person. And in that split moment, he diffuses. He notices the person, he labels them as a person or a thought, and then he allows them to be there. He doesn't engage with them because he's not sure whether that is a helpful uh, thought or a not so helpful thought. Then he checks in with his uh, student and he says, can you see him? Now, funny enough, his uh, student says yes, and he has a bit of a chuckle and says, are you sure? And they have a bit of lightheartedness, a bit of uh, uh, humor and comedy and a bit of fun. And then he goes out and he looks at that person and he gives him his attention. In actual, in actual fact, he apologizes, he says, uh, apologies, I'm always suspicious of new people. What we're saying is, here is let's be suspicious of thoughts. Let's not go out and take them verbatim. Let's not fuse with them, but let's be mindful, considered, or maybe even suspicious, if you will, lightheartedly, uh, about those thoughts. Because that's what Dr. Nash did, and that's how he went out and he shook off the struggle and the pain uh, and the fight he had with these hallucinations. I hope you enjoy uh, the movie, this clip, and I'd encourage you to go back and watch the whole movie. It's fascinating, great stuff. Uh, have, a, have a watch, have a look if you haven't seen it for a little while. Thanks, Professor. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye. See you. Papers and hammers to buy this. Professor Nash. Can you see him? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> You're positive. He's within your vision. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm just always suspicious of new people. See you next week. I'll see you next week. So now that I know that you're real, who are you and what can I do for you? 